Good morning, church. I'm so glad that you could worship with us today. We are going to be talking on the title, Drifting Away. Our scripture reading is James 5, verses 19 and 20. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their ways will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. We're going to be talking about Christian responsibility. When Jesus asked Cain where his brother was, Cain's answer was, am I my brother's keeper? God didn't even bother to respond to the question because he knew what had happened to Abel. But we are responsible for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We should not see them drifting away from the Lord and not say anything. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, says Proverbs. The righteous have abilities far beyond those of mortal men. If you are an active Christian with God on your mind, you can save a soul from death. There is nothing greater than that. Leonard and I were discussing a pastor he knew and the trouble they were having with their daughter. The church people were just chattering away. He's the, she's the pastor's daughter and she's doing all this, that, and the other. She, or she should be the last person doing those type of things. But really, the pastor's daughter would be the first person on Satan's list because he's going through the daughter to get to the pastor. You know, young people, this. Christian faith, their, their spirituality, all of that is in the baby stages. So Satan is waiting to grab them up and take them away. They are young, lacking in wisdom and in understanding, and they are easy targets for Satan. Hebrews 2.1 says, therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard lest we drift away from it. And there are so many people drifting away. They're everywhere. They're on the street corners. They're where you go to the store. They're at your job. And they've been in church. They've been learned, but they just didn't root. And Satan is just sliding them out. It is so easy for any of us to get caught up in Satan's trap. He watches you and learns you, particularly in the areas in which you are weak, and he waits around to devour you. A righteous person can pray to God on your behalf with such faith and determination that Satan will drop you and run. This comes from sincere care for a person's soul. When someone cares about your soul, it doesn't matter what you look like, how you act, or what you do. That person's concern for you is that you don't end up in hell. Christians should care about each other's souls. In James, he's telling us about wandering from the truth. He is not talking about an unsaved person who needs to be converted. He's talking about someone who knew the Lord, who had a relationship with the Lord, who had a relationship with Jesus one-on-one -on -one personal, but has drifted or is drifting away from that relationship. The Bible calls this person a backslider. This person used to go to every event and service that the church had. He never missed a Bible study. He sat in the front of the church. When you saw him, he looked directly at you and he said, praise the Lord. But lately he hasn't been around much. This person might even hide out in another church. 
I heard a preacher compare this person to a slow leak in a tire. You knew you should have taken care of the problem, but you let it go until it was completely flat. We can't allow this to happen to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We should check for leaks in our souls. It is our Christian responsibility to bring him back. You know, and, and, and I've heard in the church and just with people in general, you know, I don't want to get in anybody's business. But you have to get into your brothers and sisters' business because you just can't let them go. We have the ability to bring that person back to his senses. The first thing that should be done is to pray. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. That's what the Bible says. God's people had started worshiping idols and God told Moses that he was going to destroy each and every one of them. But Moses prayed to God on behalf of the people and God did not destroy them. We recently talked about Jonah going to Nineveh to tell the people that God was going to destroy them for their wicked ways. Those people prayed and God did not do what he said. And James says, if anyone is sick, pray. If anyone is in trouble, pray. If we pray, anyone who has sinned will be forgiven. Remember this, James says, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their ways will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Sin multiplies itself. We start off with one sin and then it snowballs into a multitude. But the blood of Jesus can cover the sins of those who do truly repent and are heartily sorry. Sometimes all people need is a reminder that God is God. Restoring those who have drifted away takes courage. What courage is is moving forward in spite of your fear. We cannot allow our fear to let others perish. So one, pray, fervent prayer. Our thoughts must be fixed and our desire must be firm. Our faith, our faith should not accept anything but yes and amen from God. Matthew tells us about some men who brought their paralyzed friend for Jesus to heal him. They had to carry the friend on a stretcher. And there was such a big crowd there that they couldn't bring him through the front door. So they took him to the roof and they tore it apart. And then they lowered the friend down to Jesus. And this is what Jesus said. First he said, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And when your sins are forgiven, you are healed inside and out. That's the faith and determination that I'm talking about. Number two, confront the drifter privately. We all know a lot of gossip goes on in the church and is, is disguised as concern. If you truly want to help somebody, go, go to them. Tell him that you heard about his trouble. Remind him who God is. Most people in trouble haven't been thinking about God for a while. David took a good man's wife, used her, impregnated her, and killed her husband because he forgot about God. People who get wrapped up in sin forget that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. They forget that God can restore us to the joy of salvation. He's a shelter in the time of storm. God is our helper. The Lord is the sustainer of my soul. 
And Acts 3.19 says, Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And to get the presence of the Lord, you need to be in the presence of the Lord. Number three, restore him with a spirit of gentleness. It says in Galatians 6, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. 2 Corinthians 2, 7 says to forgive and comfort him so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. And that means we don't have to beat him over the head with his sin. He knows what he did. The Holy Spirit still talks to those people, but they tend to push him aside. We had a whole conversation about the Holy Spirit. Some people don't even know that there is a Holy Spirit. But when you know about the Holy Spirit, he nudges you, he pushes you, he taps you on the shoulder. He'll yoke you in the back of your neck because he wants you to succeed and continue to love the Lord. We are not to regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. And number four, pray. Pray going in and pray going out. Luke 22, 32. And this is when Jesus tells Peter, you know, Peter, Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. And when Jesus is praying for you, you can't go wrong. Jesus also added something else to what he said. He said, once you have been restored, strengthen your brother you gotta once you have been lifted up and you have understanding and wisdom of God and you have learned some things out there in the world you need to tell somebody else that means you're the preacher all Christians are ministers and we should be constantly ministering to each other and those that we come across to in the world T.D. Jakes, we were listening to him, and um, he was talking about how bad the Corinthian church was. But they needed to be disciplined. He said, this is where the 21st century ministry has got to change. We've got to stop putting people out of the church. We've got to disciple them. We've got to work with them where they are. We have to teach and train them but we can't just throw them out. How can you scale a fish? This was really good. How can you scale a fish if you haven't caught it? We don't know what God will do with the most unlikely people, because I'm unlikely. And if he saved me, he can save anybody. So I'm gonna end with Matthew 18, and this is verses 12 through 14. This is Jesus speaking. If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly, I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Amen.